Hi friends, welcome on board for another project. This time I decided to design this dual output switching power supply. So here is the AC input universal in the range of 85 to 260 volts and this is the output dual 15 volts positive and negative and each of these outputs can deliver 500 milliamps continuously. As usual, I designed a schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and I have uploaded the project files in my Altium 365 cloud space. To download the project for free, just follow this link and register on the Altium 365 website. Then simply follow this link and download the project files for free. Let me explain the board just briefly. This is the AC input as I said. This yellow capacitor is an X to rated capacitor for noise reduction. This is a varistor, varistor uh, for protection. This is a glass fuse, a common mode truck, bridge rectifier, and this fat guy is the main capacitor for ripple reduction. These three components belong to the snubber circuit and this chip is the controller and this is a transformer, an RM8 type. This is an RM8 ferrite transformer and RM transformer types are preferred in terms of efficiency and lower EMI. Although winding this transformer by hand is a little bit more difficult than for example E-types. These capacitors for noise reduction and this one is a lower ESR type. Although you can use normal capacitors but a low ESR type like this is preferred. It reduces the noise of the supply of the, of the transformer. This one is the optocoupler and here is the output. Shot kit diode and this is a Pi filter for noise reduction and these components belong to the feedback loop and using the shunt regulator and you can adjust the output precisely on 15 using this multi-turn potentiometer because your winding will have some error especially when you wind using hand and this uh, potentiometer is to compensate that winding errors and this is the negative side of course this shot key diode is in reverse because this is the negative output and the same the same as this positive there here is the pi filter and this is an led to indicate that we have a voltage at the output uh, this is the back side you can see the isolation gaps or creepage areas to follow the high voltage ipc the output uh, this is a two layer board and i have assigned the top layer just to the ground to reduce the length of the ground path reduce the length and impedance of the ground path to lower the noise and emi i think i covered most of the points in the next step i will go through the schematic and pcb just stay tuned all right here is my altium 365 cloud space and i have uploaded these five projects so far you can do the same, create your own space the same as me. I have created this my Vanitar space. Also, you can download all of these projects for free. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, just follow this link in my YouTube video description and register on the Altium 365 cloud space. Then just follow this link and download the project files for free. I mean this project. Anyway, if I double click on this one, it will open the project files. So this one is the schematic diagram, this one is the PCB layout, and this one is the 3D view of the PCB board. So let me explain the schematic. Here is the AC input, this one is the fuse, this one is a varistor, and C2 is an X2 rated capacitor for noise reduction. And this one is a common uh, common mode chalk as its name says to reduce the common mode noises and BR is a bridge rectifier to convert the AC to DC. C3 is the main capacitor for ripple reduction so is the first component after this bridge rectifier 
and this high voltage DC line, when I move the cursor on this DC line net, it highlights the net. So it's a, it's a good feature of this Altium 365 for presentation. So as I said, this DC line comes through here. These three components belong to the Snubber network. It is called RCD network. I prefer this kind of Snubber, I mean RCD, resistor, capacitor, and diode. That's why it's called RCD. And it's to damp the switching spikes of the premiere of the transformer because our transformers are not ideal so they will introduce some leakage inductance especially when we, we make the transformers by hand so these spikes should be dampened uh, or should be reduced uh, using a snubber otherwise it will damage the mosfet so there is no mosfet here it is included inside this controller so either it will damage the external or internal MOSFET of this controller and it will kill the controller in this case. So IC1 is the controller. It senses the output voltage. I mean the variation on changes the output voltage through this optocoupler. And this optocoupler provides a galvanic, galvanic path for the controller to sense the output voltage. These resistors and this reference or shunt regulator bring, belong to the feedback uh, network to sense the to sense the output voltage and stabilize it on 15 volts okay so if i put on this net you can see the nets and this 15.2 is this one anyway this side is the positive one i mean the positive 15 volts so the voltage comes through this shotkey diode and goes through this pi network and this pi uh, network or pi filter clc filter is for noise reduction and i have put the feedback on this one so this one the negative output uh, is not on the feedback however if we draw the same current from both sides the both will have the same voltage Otherwise, we will have some uh, variation on this one because this one is not on the uh, feedback path or uh, there is no feedback from the negative output. So if, I, if we just draw current from this one, we will see some voltage variation in terms of reduction, not increasing, just reducing reduction from this output. This output is negative, that's why I put this uh, shotkey diode in reverse and these components are also related because the negative of the capacitor should be connected to this side because this is the negative output. Okay, let's go to the PCB. So as I said, here is the input. This side is the controller, transformer, and this is the output. Let me enable the layers. and. In the output, I assign the top layer, this red one, just to the ground. This is to reduce the impedance and length of the ground path to stabilize the uh, controller, I mean the stabilize the power supply and reduce the noise and EMI. Because this technique uh, reduces the loop size in the ground. Uh, also, uh, let if I show the bottom layer, so if I disable and uh, enable the bottom relay layer, this loop, I mean from the diode to the negative of the capacitor should be as small as possible. And this is a very important loop. Otherwise, it will uh, show some EMI noises here. And we will see this EMI both at the output and also when we use a near field probe here we will see some increasing EMI near these components if this loop area is high. So the negative of the uh, capacitor should be as close as possible to the negative of the transformer. That's why I have designed like this. This is very important. The same as the uh, ground, the top ground, okay? So, uh, Another uh, important point is the drain or the
the switching side of the controller because the MOSFET is included inside, inside this controller so we don't see any MOSFET otherwise I call it drain so the drain of the MOSFET should be very close to the transformer because this area contains wild switching currents and uh, any uh, distance or bad PCB layout will increase the EMI and spikes here and the ground is here the ground also have the lowest pass and impedance so just from here at the negative of the capacitors comes capacitor comes to the negative of the controller and all of these capacitors the last point is the creepage areas you can see I have put these isolation gaps on creepage areas near the critical components near high voltages especially here I said this area is critical so I have put one isolation gap here and one here uh, on the bottom of the transformer uh, on the back side of this uh, this capacitor and below the optocoupler these are mandatory and here also uh, between the drain and this positive side uh, and here is should be 15 this is my mistake because my first intention was to design a double 12 volts but changed my mind and designed for 15 so I will modify this 12 to 15 uh, let me show you the 3d nothing special in the 3d I think I covered most of the points if you have any questions just let me know in the comments section all right welcome to the test bench here is the power supply board the led is on the input is connected to the mains ac line of course through an isolation transformer because later on i will connect the oscilloscope probe to the input to show you the waveform on the premier of the transformer but this side i have connected these two dc loads to the outputs this one to the positive output and this one to the negative output both draws 500 milliamps continuously and 15 volts on the outputs because we have one uh, feedback line uh, on the power supply naturally we just we have just one feedback so the negative side is dependent on the load of the positive side not uh, too much but uh, if you don't draw the same amount of current from both outputs you will see some voltage tolerance on the negative side but if you uh, draw identical current from both outputs you will get a tight regulation on either of the output I mean especially on the negative side because the positive side is uh, regulated through the feedback network let me show you the thermal stress on the power supply because I run this for around one hour at the full load so let me show you the thermal stress so it says the hottest point is on the snubber resistor at around 86 degrees the transformer is rated at 55 degrees the switching controller at 57 degrees the output shot kit diode at 53 degrees and look at this uh, resistor to limit the current to the LED at around 45 maybe so if you think the stubber resistor is under thermal stress you can change the value and increase it uh, it is rated at 1 watt I'm not sure if it is under stress or not but if you think uh, just modify the value because the MOSFET of the controller is rated at 700 volts and you have a room to reduce the heat on the snubber resistor uh, because there are uh, there is too much room uh, for the noise to reach uh, to around 650 volts and 700 volts and damage the MOSFET uh, 
At the second test, I will connect the oscilloscope probe to the premier of the transformer and show you the waveform on the oscilloscope screen. Alright, this is the waveform on the premier of the transformer or the D pin of the controller or I can say the drain pin of the internal MOSFET. I have applied the maximum load to the output and this is the results. You can see the jitter on the screen and this jitter is the feature of the controller chip to reduce the EMI and enhance the efficiency. You can detect this jitter if your oscilloscope has a good uh, refresh rate and uh, a significant or I can say acceptable amount of memory depth. Look at this edge. It shows the snubber works perfectly. So if I press the zoom and play with the snub, it exactly shows the edge of the pulse. If I stop the waveform, you can see the snubber works perfectly. And we don't see any spike on the edge of the pulse. Uh, the peak-to-peak -peak value of the pulse of the waveform is around 450 volts. And that's why I said in the previous step, you have enough room to modify the resistance of the snubber. If you think that thermal stress is high for this power supply in the long run. So if you think that's high, just modify the resistance value. The MOSFET, the maximum MOSFET voltage is around 700 volts. So pretty uh, high room or pretty big room to play with the resistance of that snubber. So I hope you like this video. Just give me a big thumbs up. We will do something else in the next video.